Hello. Um, today I want to talk about the films I got from the Criterion 50% off sale at Barnes & Noble. Um, I also got a couple of movies that we'll talk about before the Criterion films um, that I got that were at a decent price because everything was off. Of, you get percentages off. So I thought why not talk about those a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to really get into any details here. It's not about a specific movie. But I kind of thought, just show them and talk a little bit about them. And then hopefully somewhere time in the future I'll make videos of these movies. Um, so, yeah. The first one is uh, Brian's Song. This is a film about two Chicago Bear football players and um, the friendship they have. And uh, it's a very good film. Um, it's a sad movie, though. Um, and while I don't really cry or whatever at movies, um, it's just quite sad. And uh, this is a film that I think I have to be in the right, right mood for, right mindset, if that makes sense. You know, I haven't rewatched it yet because I watched this uh, when I was a kid in the '90s. So I've seen this before. I know what it's about. Uh, I just have yet to rewatch it. Um, I got these on the 31st of July, so the very last day of July, and a couple days before the entire sale ended. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a film. Uh, I saw, I noticed, thought, might as well pick it up. It was actually uh, quite reasonable, and plus, you know, the percent of, like, 30% off of this, I'm like, you know, I might as well uh, get it while uh, I'm thinking about it. And uh, so I did, and I can't wait to watch this again uh, in the near future. Um, this one is uh, Apocalypse Now, The Final Cut. Um, this has six discs. Uh, the first two are four, the 4K Blu-rays. The rest of the four are the normal Blu-rays. Um, and all the special features are on the Blu-rays. Um, but uh, this that, that last week, and I just watched this film. I watched all of the versions, and... Uh, they're all really good. Um, I can definitely see why Coppola trimmed or cut some of the scenes from the Redux out that he did um, for his version. Though I do think I like the Redux a bit more. Um, but you know, I'll have to. I think I'll have to rewatch them again sometime in the future. See if that. Uh, if I really uh, still think that or not. Um, but I don't know. Again, I've only seen the final cut once already. I wanted to get this last year, but a whole bunch of other things came out, and, you know, sometimes uh, you're just not able to get everything you want to get. You kind of have to wait a while. Um, but that's all right. This was actually at a fairly decent price for Barnes & Noble. You know, sometimes they kind of make prices for like movies and stuff a bit higher than they really should be at times. I mean, I love Barnes and Noble. Like I love going into a bookstore and buying a book. And you know, if it's like a store like Barnes and Noble and they have movies, I also like to get a movie or two. Um, though things are 30% off normally. So, and the price they had was actually not too bad for its normal price. Plus the 30% off. I'm like, might as well just get it now. Uh, you know, it, it really came down to just a couple of bucks, just more than if you, I went to Target or Best Buy to get this. So it really wasn't all that big of a difference price-wise at Barnes & Noble when I got this. So just took advantage of it, of the, of the little sale I had going on, and I thought, might as well. And uh, I rewatched all the special features. Um, from the uh, 
version I have of this, of the uh, full disclosure Blu-ray. I believe I've talked about this film before, um, but, you know, I might talk about this again, now with the uh, final cut. Um, this, uh, this is still a very good film. Um, I, yeah, not much more I can really say, except it's still good. Um, and now, finally, the Criterion films. And again, I'm not going to get into any in-depth here. But the first one I got was the only one I got in the store, which was Midnight Cowboy. Um, this is actually a film I wanted to get for some time, but for some reason just never did. I guess because Criterion had other films out at the time that I thought, I want to get this a bit more. I'm more I... I like this movie more than Midnight Cowboy, or I'm just more intrigued with it. But, you know, the first X rated film to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, and the only one to win Best Picture. The second was A Clockwork Orange. Um, Dustin Hoffman and uh, John Voight were nominated for Best Actor at, at the Academy Awards, and really all the other. Uh, award ceremonies, I believe. But they all lost to the Duke here because uh, he uh, did True Grit. And, uh, you know, John Wayne deserved an Academy Award. Um, but I think a lot of people can say, you know, True Grit is a very good film and he gave a great performance as he normally does. But, you know, he should have won for, like, the... The Searchers, which he wasn't even nominated for. Um, which, you know, is unfortunate, but sometimes some people's best work uh, gets overlooked. Um, and so, if, like John Wayne here, he gets an Academy Award, but it's for the wrong movie. Um, not that that was a bad performance by him, but, like, if we're going to say, you know, the Academy is supposed to and is normally gives Academy Awards to the very best of a person's that year as well as throughout their careers. You know, they get try to give, nominate, and also honor the very best performances by an actor or actress in a given year. This was not the case. I think Dustin Hoffman should have won. He won 10 years later for the first time for a <clears throat> uh, Kramer versus Kramer, which is a good film, but I think uh, people can say, uh, yeah, it was because he didn't win for this film. Um, I still think, though, uh, Peter Sellers and being there, or Roy Scheider for all that jazz, should have won instead of Hoffman for Kramer versus Kramer, but you know, that's a topic for another time, I guess. But, you know, Midnight Cowboy, good film. Uh, I'm glad to have it now. Wanted to uh, get it, and I'm... Yeah, don't know really why, other than the couple of examples I gave. It's the only thing I can think of. And the, this movie, I just got today, because I had to order this. Because... They didn't have a whole lot of selection, though I guess because, you know, I waited till the last few days to actually jump on it, uh, you know, that's really why, but, you know, The Great Escape, I, uh, mentioned this when I was talking about thinking of getting some Criterion films, and I actually do have this on Blu-ray already, but I wanted a Criterion version because, well, you know, better presentation as well as some new all the old stuff and I believe some uh, a few more uh, feature special features were added to this set that the other one didn't have and granted the disc I have is it a set of four films with Steve McQueen but um, I think there might be one or two things that this one, you know, 
has that the other didn't. If it's like commentary or maybe a documentary or something. But it basically does have everything that the my original disc has. But the pre presentation for picture and sound is better than the <clears throat> other one I have. So that's just another reason to get it. Plus, I just love The Great Escape. It's a great film. Uh, you know, rewatched it. Uh, around the time I talked about getting this originally, so yeah, it's. I can't wait to watch this uh, again and just see how the picture and sound looks with it. I'm sure it'll be very good. And the other film I uh, ordered is not out because next month is when. It's actually coming out. Uh, it has The Elephant Man, um, a David Lynch film. He has some of his films in the Criterion Collection already. And uh, that's actually the first film I watched on the Criterion channel. Though it was not in the Criterion Collection at all. And there's no hint of it coming at any point in the future. But, you know, the Criterion channel was sort of still like filmstruck. Sometimes they get films uh, from that aren't in the collection to stream for like a month or so and um, yeah I watched The Elephant Man and it was really good uh, just like I remembered it. Um, it's not my favorite David Lynch film but I think it is fair to say it's one of my favorite films of his. Um, it's. I think people would say he he makes some weird movies, and that David Lynch himself is a bit of an odd character. Um, and I don't say that as a negative, in a negative way. I say that in a very positive way. Um, he's very unique, and I think his uniqueness you know, can also quite, kind of come off as a bit odd or strange. Um, this is one of his few films that I think people could see if they've watched his other movies and say, you know, The Alpha Man is actually fairly normal, straightforward movie and that doesn't really go here and there. It's just quite bizarre and odd. Um, Blue Velvet can kind of get that way. Um, and I think that's partially thanks to Dennis Hopper. Um, know is in apocalypse now uh, but you know uh, the elephant man is a film I really like John Hurt's performance is incredible he got nominated for the Academy Award um, he lost to uh, Robert De Niro in Raging Bull I think it's an understandable loss though as I've mentioned a few times before I think it would be cool if sometimes in a certain years if ties could actually happen, and if so, if that was a possibility for like Academy Awards or just award shows in general, then you know, I think uh, John Hurt should have won an Academy Award alongside uh, Robert De Niro when he won for the for Raging Bull. You know, Hurt could have won for The Elephant Man. Um, but also, you know, Anthony Hopkins was fantastic in that film, as was um, uh, Anne Brancroft, or I believe that's her name. Yeah, Mel Gibson, or you know, Mel Gibson, Mel Brooks's wife. I don't know why Bob Mel Gibson, but hey, you know he's a good director and actor too. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I really enjoy The Elephant Man, and I can't wait to have the Criterion set and also to put it with my uh, other David Lynch films like Eraserhead and Blue Velvet. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Um, the last few things I'd like to say is Wilford Brimley passed away uh, August 1st, I believe. I heard about it August 2nd, but, uh, you know, 
rest in peace to him. He was in, um, you know, the <clears throat> cocoon and the thing and absence of malice and so many other fantastic films. He was always a really great actor. He had a great presence. Um, you know, rest in peace to him. Um, and also John Saxon also passed away not too long ago. And I did not know this. I had no clue. I just know this because his birthday wasn't too long and he would have been 84 this year. So he didn't make it. Um, though he died of pneumonia. Um, well, for Brimley, I don't believe his uh, cause of death had uh, been, uh, has been uh, said, but he had diabetes for many years, um, and apparently he was on dialysis for some time, so unfortunate, you know, and I didn't hear about John Saxon, but, you know, and John Saxon was uh, uh, the cop and father in um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street films. Um, and he was also a cop in <clears throat> and Black Christmas. Um, he was also in um, Enter the Dragon, yeah, the Bruce Lee film. Yes, uh, was, that, was that Enter the Dragon? I believe it was. Yes. Yes, it was. It was uh, Enter the Dragon. Okay, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to double check. I thought it was, but, you know. Yeah. All right, well. Anyway. That's really it. Just wanted to have a little... Uh, mention some actors that passed away and uh, yeah you know can't wait to watch the rest of these movies that I haven't watched already um, can't wait to get uh, The Elephant Man and um, yeah curious if you got any uh, uh, films during the Barnes and Noble sale uh, in July, if so, what did you get? And if not, um, you plan to? Uh, I'm sure in November when they'll probably have another sale. Um, do you plan to get any? Is there anything on your that you've been looking at? Maybe you've made a list of what you like and sort of have to narrow it down because you know. Sometimes you just can't get everything all at once that you love to get, but, you know, you'll just, uh, you'll at least make a list and just sort of figure out which ones you really want the most, um, which is what I do, usually. Sort of have a list, and then I look at the movies that I really want, uh, at the moment, and I get those. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, it's, uh, that's really all I have this time. I, uh, I hope you're all having a great day. And a, I hope you'll all have a great weekend and a great week. See you all next time. Be safe.